Um, el viento o el polvo tal vez es an exhibition that is taking the, my experience in my neighborhood, las cumbres, and is trying to collaging and using different techniques just to explore the history of that place and try to pol politicize, uh, politicize politizar the conversation about the challenges that the neighborhood is facing right now. So in order to do that, I um, not only open a, co a communal library in my neighborhood um, with, along with my brother, but we also offer a science fiction workshop to work with my family and my neighbors, those three concepts how my family and my neighbors are thinking about the future, the community, and labor. And based on that experience, in the conversations that we have, in the strategies that we all work together, is those keys or, let's say, like fragments that help me to start to put all these work together, right? So a piece like this that is collage, and you know like why i'm using collage in this exhibition well because when i was little and we um, we didn't have electricity in the neighborhood was one of the activities that i used to do with my father right like in silence with the light of the candles because it was easy to make because you had to uh, put beautiful images to your textbooks or your notebooks whatever so it was like one of these first practices that I learned uh, how to make with your hands, right? And I never think or thought that I will make such a big frame, almost like a sacred um, size to give place to just a small collage, right? But that small collage wants to envision like that a desire the desire of having a figure, a goddesses, that can protect my neighborhood, no? That's, that's why like she feels so fearful and has like these big teeth and has weapons and has spikes, right? Like, and, and whatever you want or not, um, it has like a lot of Catholic uh, references, right? Like the structure itself in which like, this um, um, uh, the, the collage is made of and, and that's like part as, as John was saying before is, is just part of the experiences that we grow up like some imagery that is out there coming from films coming coming from family and education or whatever that it just has roots on you and you cannot deny that right but you can twist it always and use it for your own uh, let's say, uh, purposes. And then I, uh, I wanted to play also with the aesthetic of science fiction. And you know, like green is always like um, the color of poison and the color of craziness, of disease, the, the color of that almost can portray like a menace, right? So have like these, um, um, saying this emblema, this lemma, this uh, uh, phrase that wants to say El Sur are us, we are the South, El Sur somos nosotros 
it, it was, it's, it's try to, to play with a statement of uh, a, a position, a location to, to give yourself a geography from which you recognize that you're speaking, especially when I was um, in, the, in a moment that I was living in the United States and studying in the United States, to think about all these and all the beauty about the political keys that this small neighborhood in Tijuana was giving me, to say something like that out loud and to give that color was very important. Not like a statement, like this is, this is us. Um, and then uh, I wanted to include these weaving pieces that is about ropes. And for me, the most important part of these pieces is about the knots. And that can be, I don't know, just a very, very small gesture because if you think about this, um, every one of these is just like a small piece of fabric, right? A small piece of fabric that I'll, if it's alone, maybe it's easy to break. And when I found that the gesture of knotting with, with another in a very, like, with a lot of strength, give more chance to the whole net to not break, it was when I started to think like more often about the alliances that we're building all the time just between everyone right like your friends your community uh, your women friends your lovers it's like i think that it has um it has the potentiality just to create a lot of references or or metaphors right like of what a knot uh, means uh, a piece like this for instance um that is made only of bhs tapes is a tribute to cinema because I, I think that and I was thinking about that while I was coming here like wow if I had to make like a package of all those movies that helped to change my life like what those movies would be right like in what movies I would put in that in that bag I love cinema and I wanted to use this material because also my first connection with cinema was through VHSs and because I worked from 11 to 17 or 12 to 16 in a, in a video uh, rental store in my community and, and that was great uh, but it was also my first experience or my second experience of labor like being a worker and, and also because I love like how you always see in Tijuana how these things get trapped like in the trees and the bushes and they're just like doing this and I always found that like movement just beautiful right like and the sound too is I think just is, is um it was a, a really beautiful material uh, to work with pieces like this for instance is it's a piece that I start to do just using these small pieces of strings that I start to see scattering the floor of my studio after I was working with all the ropes because I was like weaving and weaving and weaving the ropes for another exhibition uh, that I was presented in Secud and then I start to notice that when I was able like to clean the floor and put these things that they were like you know like the leftovers of the fabric that was my favorite thing like to see those things together no and then as the knot was this metaphor of resilience and love and and, and, and strength um, between between the people then I was thinking like how sacred and beautiful like the leftover can be how, as the margin is also beautiful right as the things that moves in the shadows is also beautiful and I think that that other metaphor like to be able to work something 
that is a spectacular because it entails like a lot of work and a lot of detail. If I can portray some of that potentiality, I'm doing my work. No, that's the work that I want to do. So uh, I went crazy and I did this. And then I did the other one. <laughs> um, and if you ask me about the palette color and because there's so much pink, right? And so much orange and it's like so bright. I think that is is just me trying to be very brave. Like this skirt is me trying to be very brave. Um, it, to someone that always only wanted to use black and be very punk and be like as stuff I can be, you know, and then like, I know I also want to be this <laughs> and just work with a lot of teddy bears and things that shines, like, why not? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm letting myself now like also to, to be that. Um, and, and these three pieces, I love these three pieces because I think that they came also from friendship because uh, my friend Ted um, in Tucson, he's also an artist, he's also in a sculpture and I think that he understand that I was trying to look, um, I was trying to look, I was, no, I was looking forward to move away from photography and from collage and from two-dimension two work. And he asked me if I wanted four boxes of belts that he have kept in his storage unit for 10 years. One time he saw someone like throwing these boxes um, every night, just like dozens of boxes full of something that seems very heavy from the window that he was no? crossing the street in the That's studio of an artist eh? something in boxes like it's very heavy like what the fuck are these guys doing like why are they throwing these things all the time like in these uh, garbage can like huge garbage can so one night he crossed the street and he pulled these boxes and he found like these beautiful uh, leather belts, right? And he was like, jackpot, I'm gonna send these to Tucson, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell them, make some money. Um, and as soon as he sent the boxes to Tucson and he arrived Tucson a few months later, the, the belts were already revealing his cheapness or like his fakiness, no? Like, it's not true leather. Um, so he never did anything with them, but he refused to throw them away because he spent all that money, right? <laughs> so finally, 10 years later, was like, okay, I really need to get rid of this. And they ended up in my hands. And it was funny because as soon as I open the boxes and I see the color, I start to weep the them, you No, know, in his patio, like in front of, of, of his truck. And he said, like, yeah, those are yours. Like, you already know what you're going to do. So I, I find out that uh, these 400 leather um, fake belts, I can make much more pieces out of them. Like, if I read uh, all the pieces, from each belt, I will have four individual elements. The back, the middle, the front, and the head. Right, so I think that, for instance, is a, it's a very Tijuana technique, no? That, that Liliana and Zacarias here, like, they will understand, like, if we got something, like, we gonna understand how can we make the best out of that. Como le puede sacar el jugo, no? So, so the fact that I have, like, these three pieces out of the same material, is is it's it's a way to speak about that as my boxes are too right like you're just using i mean probably the, the entire exhibition <laughs> it's just a very tijuaneada um, form of, of work that i think that all of us are very proud no to have a life to learn and, and experience and see it all the time in, in the public space 
Um, and, and then there's the, the film. I think the film is the heart of the, of the exhibition because in this film what you see is, is the work that we are doing at the library that we have in the neighborhood. In, 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 my mom used to have a little convenience store and that was like the family business, right? Like a convenience store where you can buy, you know, eggs, milk, tortillas, whatever. And then when she passed away, we didn't want to have a convenience store anymore. So the, the, the little local, this little place in our front yard just became like this um, storage. And um, we have different Stor stories about like how we decide to make a library one is in 2015 we me and my brother we we had the clarity that we wanted to do something in the neighborhood that's eight years ago and we went outside to the street on both um, on el dia de votaciones um, and we made uh, several interviews to our neighbors to ask what do they want? What do they think that the community needs? And one of the, the answers that we received was a uh, library. Another version of why we made the vet library is because I had a dream where I was in charge of building a library for Secut. Uh, with the help of Javier Ramirez Limon. And then when I wake up of that dream, I was like, ah, actually, that's a great project. I should make a library. I can do it right here in the, in the community. And another version is that one day, me and my brother, we were like uh, looking at the neighborhood and, um, and we just thought like, we really want to stay here. We should make something important for if it's not important, at least that it can be helpful for this community that we love, that we grow up and that we know that we don't want to leave, never, right? Like, this is our house and we, we love this place, so what should we do? And we made this library then. And then in the library, to activate the library, we did the science fiction workshop and what you see in the, in the, in the movie is how we are preparing ourselves to build our costumes, our armatures, and the weapons with which we imagine to be a guerrilla group. That is the Frente de Liberación de Cumbres, right? And it was tough, really tough, because the first week that we start this science fiction, where we wanted to think about the future and the community, the neighbor next door, the person that lives next to my house, Veronica, Leah's mom, that they were, you know, participating in the workshop because they are my neighbors and we have been seeing these kids since they, they were born. Their mom was killed. And I think that that tragedy really impact the rest of the, of the workshop because we reach a point where I at least felt that I cannot be ciphered anymore in the things that I need to say to the people of the community. That the library is, is being made because we are tired of being killed and we are tired of just losing people and we are tired of all the lack of opportunities that we have uh, in the future because we are just poor, right? And, and, and always to, to speak about poverty is very difficult for me because I know like how many cliches can be around and how exoticized can be also, especially if you're from Mexico and you speak about that in the United States. And I refuse to be in that place because that's not my intention, but, but it's also a reality that I cannot deny, right? That they is impacting us. So it happened that, and then the Cartel de Juarez, it was the, the next weekend was when they decide to burn all the cars in the city. And we have like this uh, toque de queda, and we couldn't go outside. So it was like another layer of just the fucking violence that we, everyone is exposed. 
and we have to cancel like that activity that we are visioning, uh, uh, are see, we are seeing in the in the video. We had to cancel that because there was a toque de queda because the, because the cartel said that we couldn't go outside, right? And we have to wait another week to make this activity. And then when we get to to do the activity, I think that everyone was, you know, like with this sensation that that to to have a fantasy of being a guerrilla that is protecting this territory and this place is not just a fiction, it's not just a representation. I think that it really is speaking about a lot of the desire and the fear that we that littles and, and the grown ups are are um, having seen, since a long time ago. And if you see the costumes um, women are making shields to not be recognized, to be camouflaged in the public space. They don't want to be seen and no one told them what to do, right? The little kids are making things that looks made of metal because they want to, and, and they're made of their, the entire body, right? Uh, armatures are made like with the plastics of just garbage. I, what I want to say is that there's something about the those symbols that everyone is choosing to protect with that are speaking very loudly about what everyone is, is living, right? Um, and then if you see if the see if you see the movie, what happens at the end is it's not about the guerrilla. It's not about like those costumes. It's about all of us working together. You know, like walking together, literally walking together. And going to a place and taking a picture and be playful between each other and get to know each other better. better and walking back to our houses together without the costumes after an experience. And I think I think that that's a for me as an artist is that's an achievement and as a and that's a and also as a as a neighbor of this community, right? Because it's not about the guerrilla, it's not about um, the process of creation itself. It's about the the excuse that we use to do something else, right? That really connects you and allows you to know better the people that is around you. Yes. Okay, so uh, I've never really questioned why I make art or when or what my pieces are about, but just recent times I started thinking about it and I I guess I kind of consider it like a coming of age story. Even looking at how I paint, uh, my younger pieces, they're more like cartoon-like and as I got older I started more doing realistic faces. I've always had like this um, obsession also with how humans interact with each other. Um, kind of like this piece or just all, all of them to be honest. Um, just like this like form of like intimacy also. I think like every um, step in my uh, life I'll think of a concept or just something in that time period and it kind of like brings me, brings me back to that place. Um, yeah, it's like that's kind of it for here. Yeah, so you say that you had uh, like less realistic Yeah, like kind of like um, figures in the past. Yeah, like this one was like the first painting I've ever like my actual like first ever painting. It's like on cardboard, like I didn't even know any better. And it just like kept on moving from there. Like this one was next, that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit of your process? Would you like to work in your room, in the studio, in the street? How do you gather all the beautiful images that then you collage um, in these pieces? It's always in my room. And a lot of these pieces, I was still living with my parents. So it's like in my small room, just like, just making making space for myself. Um, yeah. At night? Did you paint that night? And anytime in the day, uh, a few years ago. I mean, now I kind of just 
paint when I have the time, but before, especially during COVID, in which a lot of these pieces were being made, I've had all day and night. So I would just like wake up, paint, eat, sleep. <laughs> Do you study painting? Or um, I've, I've never taken a painting class. I've taken art classes, uh, except for painting, because I knew that was something I was going to do outside of education. So I wanted to get more educated on like uh, sculpting, drawing, um, yeah, like different like avenues of art like that. But were those, but were those like, were those like a, a workshops or a class? Oh, that college? was like school, like community college class. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. I think it's fascinating how in a time like COVID when everyone has to be recluded, right, and isolated, then you're painting these fantasies of gatherings and just a lot of people yeah, coming right. together like what about that yeah even after covid i still kind of have like this um obsession with like how people interact with each other or even just like how humans uh, uh take up their time and space on earth and how much we rely on each other for literally everything actually like um love business and so i just even when I'm like driving down the street, like I see someone in their car, I'm like wondering like what are they doing, like who are they going to meet, and like I kind of have this like obsession with like how people like interact with each other, basically. Do you um, tell yourself stories like of yes, uh, that's, when yeah, you're yeah, definitely like, especially during my like early pieces, like um, Giddy Up. Um, the way that I start a piece never ends up the way that it ends mm -hmm. and like I'll kind of have this blueprint of how I want it to start and then as time goes on like an experience happens or a thought happens and I just like I'm adding and subtracting and it almost feels like an equation like or almost like like a puzzle until like every piece is in mm -hmm. awesome. yeah what do you think are your uh, main influences? It came from music, from cinema, from photograph? Uh... Um, from... Uh, honestly, a lot of it is from... Um, like, visual. Like, seeing people, whether it's from real life or an image. Sometimes I'll even hear of, like, a concept, like... Um, so like sometimes like I'll start a painting from a concept and I won't know the, the name of it till the very end. And there's other paintings where I'll hear like a one-liner like, like I don't know, like can of worms. Like you know when people be like, oh like it's a can of worms or the cat's out the bag. So like I'll start with the name first and then go from there. It just whatever like strikes my interest, like I'll kind of just keep it going. Mm -hmm. And talking about references, uh, some of these phases, like you said, you moved from a style that was kind of cartoonish to more like uh, realistic. Where do these phases like come from? Um, honestly, like, like let's say like from a lot of cartoons, they're actually all me. Like, and like I have to like make a different phase because I don't want to make hundreds of self-portraits. So I'm like, okay, like that's my body, that's my body, that's my body, and like just trying to make something work out of it. Um, some of them I'll just like Google references to, yeah, like, can I, like, a face, maybe like add a face with the body, just whatever will kind of get the, what I'm trying to get through going. So, do you see yourself in some of these characters? Yeah, it's weird because I see myself in all of them, and like, if I wanted to, I could put my face in it, but it's too... I don't know, I feel like to me it's like this a little bit too personal. Mm -hmm. So really everyone is me in a different, I don't know, light way. Awesome. Let's go to the other rooms. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in a way, as you said, you you reference like a very classic American scene, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean like that is something that you could see on classic movies so right you know yeah and, and it's crazy because like i've i've never lived that life like that's, i was just gonna ask you like where did you grow up that's crazy I, I grew up in the bay area and then i lived out here so like there's i don't know what it is because uh, after a few years of making art and i had like a collection where i can overview it like i kind of question why i always gear towards like this like american even Caucasian life and um, it's almost like I don't know like maybe like this like I don't like it's kind of like shown to me as like this like blueprint of like how mm. life 
is supposed to be even though like i don't agree with that there's like something about it that i'm like almost like drawn <clears throat> to almost yeah yeah i kind of have this like interest of like the 50s and 40s and i i like to paint like those eras and i think it only comes out modern because i'm in this time period so like i don't know thank you john anything else thank you would like you. to say and any something you would like to add yeah thank you to everyone yeah francisco hector alejandra you guys are the best thank you so much of course thank you